All right, for question number four, um, and this one we don't get directly in this manner, but this is a good question to cover. Um, so how can datums be perfectly perpendicular, right? We always say datums are either perfect axes, lines, or planes. And datums, again, are theoretical, but they're always going to be perfectly orthogonal. By nature, datums in a datum reference frame are always perfectly orthogonal. However, we know that, if, for example, this, uh, this plane up here is datum A. How do we make sure that if this part is irregular like this, that if this... Um, I'm sorry, we're using, we're using these patterns here now. Let's forget this as datum B. Let's imagine this ID is now datum B. Let's use this ID as datum B. And now we're locating this bolt pattern to B. So if we're saying this feature here is at some sort of angle, which it will be, nothing's perfect, right? How do we make sure that the datum created by that is always orthogonal to the datum created by a our features are imperfect to each other but our datums our datum features are imperfect to each other but our datums are perfectly orthogonal well let's start and take a take a take a look at this datum a again is going to be this plane indicated by this flatness right here datum a is down there and the unrelated actual mating envelope is going to be used to create the axis of this feature if anyone's heard this terminology before it's straight out of the asme standard it creates an axis of the feature and what it does is it expands and captures the high points of that surface right it's going to expand regardless of any other orientation until it engages all those high points now we can use this axis this feature axis to control the perpendicularity if this were perpendicularity here we're controlling the we're checking the perpendicularity of this axis to just datum a right but we're also using this feature in this scenario as datum feature b while well, this axis is clearly not perpendicular to this datum plane here. So what we need to do is use what's the related actual mating envelope. The original envelope was the unrelated actual mating envelope. This one is a related actual mating envelope. So what this is, is the envelope, or if you picture a datum simulator expanding, staying perfectly perpendicular to datum A, it's going to expand remain perpendicular to a and engage the high points here and here now from this envelope this envelope is a cylinder right it's expanding it's going to hit those high points and create a datum axis right so this datum axis is different than this datum feature Does everybody see that so we're no longer using the feature axis or we're creating a datum axis using this related actual mating envelope now we can locate all these other features to this datum axis we're not locating these features to this features axis it's located to the datums axis and by the way if anyone has noticed trying to locate um let's say if we're locating these tapped holes these are threaded holes right they don't show in the cad model but if these are threaded holes trying to locate a threaded hole is pretty difficult because there's three different three different cylinders so if we take a zoomed in picture of our threads here there's the major diameter the minor diameter and your pitch diameter which is the engagement pretty much the center of the threads or the the um middle the, in between your major and your minor it's not exactly 50 percent, but it's close to it you're gonna have your pitch cylinder unfortunately by default your pitch cylinder is what the standard tells you you have to take the location of right because as a as a fastener engages in this tapped hole that's what's going to locate that fastener it's going to engage bottom out in that pitch diameter so that's how it functions but it's very hard to measure so um, we put on minor diameter here, which is 
minor DIA. It's telling the inspectors to use a best fit pin. Forget about the major diameter of the pitch cylinder. Use the minor diameter to locate these holes. So we're going to use the minor diameter, a best fit pin that engages the minor diameter, the high points of that thread. So if anyone is uh, controlling or has control over the design of threaded locations and their um, uh, inside threads, do, do your uh, inspection company or your inspection department a favor, put minor DIA, they can use a best fit pin, which they're probably already doing is using a best fit pin, putting it in that hole and locating that pin to locate that tapped feature. The opposite can be true if you have a stud. If you have a tapped stud, you can do major DIA. And now you're saying use the major diameter of that external thread, create an axis off of that cylinder. Now we're going to locate that axis back to the datum axis, right? We're not locating it to the features axis because the features axis is going to be imperfect. So again, as inspectors, as... Uh, Machinists as designers, we need to understand that these axes are different and they're created in two different ways. And they're just utilizing two different envelopes to capture these axes, right? You have to have a perfect envelope expand and catch the high points. And those high points either are going to be orientated to something or not orientated to something, depending on the related actual mating envelope or the unrelated actual mating envelope, as you saw here. This is what the this is the axis we would use to check perpendicularity. We would have a tolerance zone, a cylindrical tolerance zone, as long as that orientated axis, this tolerance zone stays perpendicular to A. We're checking perpendicularity as long as this axis stays within that tolerance zone. After we check that or qualify that feature, we then create a datum axis off of the related actual mating envelope. Any questions there on that? Again, that one's that last question number four is is, is very conceptual, but um, I think a lot of times when using um, CMMs or we're using software, we don't necessarily know what's going on behind the scenes. Um, a lot of times this is just boiled into the software, or if it's not, we need to make sure that we are ensuring we're using the equipment, whether it's manual equipment, or virtual equipment that we're using inappropriately, we're analyzing that point cloud. So this point cloud we would create <clears throat> for the cylinder, we wouldn't need to take two measurements if we're doing the CMM. We'd take one point cloud, but what we need to do is make sure we utilize it appropriately, right? We need to make sure that if we're creating a datum from this feature, that we don't create an axis off of those points that's not perpendicular to datum axis A. It need, needs to utilize the point cloud appropriately. And again, this might just be boiled into the software, or we might, depending on the piece of equipment you're using, you might need to make sure it's being that point cloud is being interpreted this way when you're using a datum, and this way when you're checking that feature's perpendicularity. Again, that's not outlined in the standard as to how we need to check these, how many points we need to make, how we need to do it manually, how we need to do it virtually. The standard doesn't take a stance on that. All it does do is define things conceptually like this. And we need to make sure as inspectors, machinists, or designers, we're utilizing those interpretations appropriately to follow the standard. If you see ASME Y14.5 2009 on your title block, that is a uh, contract that we said, you know, when we accepted this drawing, we are producing this part to that standard. We have to be interpreting to that standard. Um, and it's up to us to make sure we're following that um, as designers, inspectors, machinists, anybody that's picking up this drawing and interpreting it, right? Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by training experts.